We are live. Welcome to She-Hulk episode 5 Thoughts. This episode is called Mean Green and Straight Poured Into These Jeans. So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. So, let's see. Yeah, so I had guessed that, you know, episode 4... Based on episode 4, we would get more of Titania's copyright suit against She-Hulk. So, yeah, good job following up on that tease at the end. I really like that, you know, <clears throat> it opens with the Titania ad and the title changes from Jen into Titania. And once again, thankfully, I love how unapolog unapologetic the show is about it. The show is made for, by, and about 30-something career woman, women, so we get a story about a non-violent, non-superpowered fight between two such women, one trying to be a petty celebrity and screw over another for branded beauty products that clearly don't work, literally selling snake oil. So I'm thinking Goop, maybe whatever the Kardashians sell, and I'm not saying only women do this, just look at Kanye's products. And the other story is about getting exclusive clothing from an extravagant designer and being really happy about the new clothes she gets. That's the ending, you know, so the the culmination, the, the, the happy ending is she's really happy about these new clothes, you know. I know some people, you know, when, whenever fiction made by, about, and for women do this kind of thing, focus on, you know, things that are stereotypically considered to be feminine, that some people say, well, shouldn't it be for everyone? Well, think about how many, you know, how much fiction made for, by, and about men focuses purely on things that only affect men. So, yeah, I really don't think there's a problem. And it's not like, it's not like the MCU never, ex you know, it does explore themes that are universal as well. You know, heroism and, like, feeling pressure from the kind of, so, yeah, I think it's great that here we have one that is, yeah. And it's not like, it doesn't make these things look bad. And I like, you know, Pug collects shoes. Nikki really respects that. And Nikki gets her favor before he gets his. And feels bad about mistaking the guy for Chinese. You know, saying we're not cops in an unexpected language is supposed to be the way you get in. It's not supposed to be like, I don't speak that language, you know. So that's a, a great subversion of expectation, great comedic bit there. Because, like, seriously, how many times have we seen that? played straight and when you stop to think about it, it is kind of ridiculous like you know no, no you just gotta know the the language that they speak and you have to tell them that you're not cops you know or it's it's not always that specific sometimes it is okay i'll grant it works a little better when they're saying something that like only they would know like so how are things going with your little brother or so, some kind of you know yeah and a version of the Avengers theme plays of the bootleg stuff. And I think it's like a, a goofy version or, uh, yeah, that gets some of the notes wrong. I, I feel like, but yeah. I love the smash cut to the two in bootleg Avengers clothes and with props. And, you know, uh, New Rock Stars and I think Screen Crush already did videos where they break down, oh, these, you know, these represent these different heroes. So, I'm yeah, I'm not going to do that. You can just watch their videos. I recommend them. I can still see you. And they're gonna counter sue, but they can't prove Jen identified as She-Hulk ongoing until the dating profile. So she has to show the judge all her bad dates. And one of them gets with Titania afterwards because he really does, like, he didn't exactly come off great and on the witness stand, but he still thinks he has a shot. And Titania's like, okay, fine, you can buy me stuff. You know, as, as others have pointed out, the the this kind of uh she's she's very shallow and focused on material goods the hulk's cousin 
by blood? Very literally, yes. And I like when Jen and I'm bad with names sometimes, the other lawyer connect over drinks, over issues that affect women and not men. And great daredevil tease at the end of the episode. And and you know, different people have said, you know, maybe this is the first suit of this version of Matt Murdock and Daredevil. Or maybe he just needed a new suit and yeah, but it would appear that Daredevil is going to be in the next episode. There we go. Just really quickly gonna put that in my notes. There we go. Now Yeah, and I don't know what the song is called that plays over the end credits, but I love it. I, there's some like Say My Name or something, you know, so yeah, because she got her name back. And, you know, I talked about, you know, it's it, the, the whole thing is, is pretty petty. Like, Titania could pick any other name, but she wants to profit off of someone else. You know, like, the reason... She-Hulk is in the news on the show because it is unusual, uh, you know, the, the this thing of, like, I mean, I mean, we don't know for sure, but I can imagine it probably made news when the first Hulk was, uh, you know, oh, actually, yeah, we, we, we do see a little bit of that in the, the, uh, the Incredible Hulk, where they say it was like this big Hulk, you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's not something you see every day, so that's part of it, and another part is that, you know, yeah, people know, oh, she's this lawyer, that's unexpected, you know, usually these heroes have, like, yeah, it's an, it's an unusual thing for the, you know the the big green rage monster to also be a lawyer you know not a not any kind of scientist you know and not just like a completely average per you know not average but like who i'm referring to is steve rogers you know he wasn't like some big kind of you know yeah he just wanted to serve so the the yeah and these things belong to Jen, you know, so Titan and Titania comes along and tries to hijack that and profit off of it, you know, and yeah, I, I gotta say, I don't know enough about celebrity drama to say for sure, but again, like, this idea of profiting off something that has a lot of attention, that is something I know Kanye has done. Also because the Young Turks talk about it every so often, you know, selling ridiculous, like, I'm not sure the products themselves are necessarily bad, but the prices he wants are ridiculous, you know, so the, the, yeah, and this is the first time we've seen that in the MCU, and it is actually a really big part of modern life, you know, like, I don't know, are there many celebrities who don't? Yeah, the the yeah, there are a number of celebrities who try to sell products attached to their name. You know, I guess yeah, maybe not as not as many actors, but a lot of musicians try to sell or maybe it's not them maybe it's other people trying to sell off their name, but yeah, which ties into the episode nicely. But yeah, the the it is this thing of, um, yeah, you know, Jen herself wants to be a anonymous lawyer. She wants a career. She didn't expect to be a celebrity, you know, 
like if someone is a lawyer or a doctor or something and they're also a celebrity it's probably because they're doing something that's very unprofessional so she really doesn't want this and the the yeah you know people are trying to titania is trying to make money off her name and identity and you know the the bootleg avenger stuff also you know trying to make money not not she hulk but off the presence of these heroes and yeah you have this thing where jen has to embrace this new identity embrace that this is who she is whether or not she likes it and try to make it work for her and again that that is a thing that a lot of women have to deal with you know they didn't choose where they came from who their family is and what their opportunities are so they have to try to make that work they have to figure out a way to, to make the most of it, you know, and yeah, I, I, I thought they did a great job. Now, some conservatives have claimed that She-Hulk is the type of character that starts out flawless. She doesn't have an arc. It's just that we're waiting for everyone else to realize how perfect she is. I think this episode does a good job underlining what a pushover she is. Like, she actually does take a pic, like Titania saying, could you take a picture of, like, that is so, like, she's just, it's a, uh, what do they call it? It's a power move, you know, she's saying, I don't, you are nothing to me, you have no power here, why don't, why don't you go ahead and take a picture of it, like, you know, taking a picture of someone else isn't by itself, like, demeaning. But Jen, you know, she went there specifically to tell her, stop taking advantage of my identity. And Titania is like, go ahead, help me. Help me take advantage of your identity, you know, which... And, and she, she actually does agree to, you know, and Nikki's also like, you're going to take the picture. And she's like, just one picture, you know, like... Okay, that's not as bad as if you stood there for hours taking pictures, you know, of her with her adoring fans. But you shouldn't take even the one picture, and she still, does, you know, and the I think they even have that exchange where she says, "I'm such a pushover." But yeah, the the and that is something that now ultimately both of the the women in this situation are women of color, but. White women take advantage, not all, but some white female celebrities, maybe especially musicians, will take advantage of signifiers of black identity. You know, where like black young black people will be told that they can't get a job or they aren't allowed to, you know, that they'll be. Uh, like if yeah if they go to a job interview or go to school with like dreadlocks which is just like that's you know it's not like i get why you wouldn't want like like they can't like show too much skin or wear a t-shirt that that says school sucks or something you know but dreadlocks really that's where you draw the line you know that it's such a ridiculous but then you'll have like ah i i feel bad about naming names because i forget who it was but i i remember there was at least one one white woman female singer who wore dreadlocks and like so many in so many people in the press were like gushing over like oh that's amazing and it's like if that was a black woman you you to tear her down over it. you know it's ridiculous and uh, yeah I believe Ariana Grande has been called out for uh, she is not a person of color she is you know technically white 
and she has been, you know, using, yeah, the, the, you know, she, I mean, in her, like, she even agreed to make fun of that, that she's been using black culture, black signifiers, you know, for her career in that, I hear it's terrible, I did not sit down and listen to it myself, but both, you know, Todd in the Shadows hates every song he's ever heard, but Rap Critic gives props to many songs in his reviews, so the, I suppose sometimes Todd in the Shadows says positive things, but not usually about the main song he's reading, but, ah, uh, what was it called? It was, it was something about saving the world, you know, which is a good thing, and Ton of Celebrities appeared on it, and Ariane appeared, and she said, I'm a giraffe, am I black or white? You know, which, yeah, that's poking fun at the fact that she's been using, yeah. Okay, at this point, I, I keep trying to think of examples. I am 100% certain by now, Miley Cyrus has done this. She uses, yeah, yeah, the, the... For example, the, the, you know, the whole thing of black women being very curvy and like, yeah, yeah, and, and black women will appear in her music videos and others have said that they're, she's basically using them like props, you know, so, so yeah, I suppose it doesn't, it doesn't work completely as well now that, you know, both Titania and Jen are women of color. And if anything, you know, like, Jen is closer to passing for white than Titania is. But, but you know, I think they might be going for something like that. You know, this is not your identity. You are using the signifiers to, uh, you know, yeah, I suppose part of how it works is Titania herself is not really a Hulk. It appears, at least at this point in the show, you know, and Jen is, you know, Titania doesn't have the green skin, so there we have the skin color thing, and I, I mean, I guess she does have the super strength, but then, like, there's tons of people in the MZU that have super strength, you don't see that, you know, ah, uh, let's see, yeah, uh, Steve Rogers was before Hulk, but, like, yeah, you know, uh, let's see, Okay, I'm not sure I can come up with a great example off the top of my head. But, yeah, you know, there are people with super... The 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 Flag Smashers have super strength. Had. I guess they're all dead by now. But, yeah, the, the they, they didn't go around calling themselves the Hulk Flag Smashers or Immigrant Hulks or something, you know. So, yeah. It's the, the, you know, yeah, she can, she takes on these signifiers of uh, someone else's identity and uses them as a brand and for profit and, you know, just, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, back to my prepared notes. Yeah, Jen is not flawless. She has a big problem lacking confidence. And in the pilot, we actually see it in part in her letting Dennis watch the closing statement. She's known him for years. She knows those are the kinds of comments he's going to give. But she still let him stand there and criticize unfairly. It's her office. She could kick him out before. Like, you, you see, that, like, after she's given the closing statement. I forget if it's her or Nikki. But one of them kicks him out. And he's not like, this is my office. No, that's her office. He has absolutely no right to just... You know, if she doesn't want him in the office, she can just tell him to leave, and he has to respect that. You know, yeah, it's her office, he's not her boss, he shouldn't have been in there. But then maybe part of the reason that a lot of conservatives don't think that she needs to grow as a character is that they don't, you know, they like when women lack confidence. It makes them easier to nag. I believe that's everything I had to... So, yeah, I... 
I don't know if I found it the funniest. I don't know that I would necessarily say it was the very best, but for sure it was one of the ones that can that that I felt the strongest connection. I I felt like really really had something to say where it can use this thing of being a lawyer sitcom set in a superhero universe, you know, to to actually comment on stuff that's in the real world, you know, and I, th I think it was um, heavy spoilers that pointed out: Are they real? Like Goop, Gw Gwyneth Paltrow is in the MCU, and it, not as herself, but playing a character. So, are they really, you know, flipping her off? But there does, like, there's definitely a resemblance. But then Gwyneth Paltrow kind of makes fun of Goop and doesn't appear to know the products that Goop offers so I don't know maybe maybe she's fine with it but but yeah um right I I saw someone say that they really didn't like that the episode was that the that it was a copyright claim I suppose I will say let's see we have four episodes left I hope that I mean that's already like let's see the the okay yeah so two episodes in a row two no wait not two ep oh right I guess oh I guess it's three episodes in a row where it's no, not necessarily copyright, but limitation between, you know, that, that Donnie Blaze that wasn't copyright, but it was like setting boundaries for this. I don't know. I I don't know that I really thought that was a a bad. Thing. But you know, over the last three episodes, two of them were about like. Oh, hold on, I guess all three are about. You cannot impersonate. Okay, so I, I understand. Yeah, I, I hope that the the next won't be. But each time it's been something... It's been something different, though. So I don't... But, but yeah. Um, let's see. What was... Let's see, episode two, that was the, right, the, yeah, the, the, um, what's it called? Um, that was Emil Blonsky, and... Yeah, and then episode three had both Emil Blonsky, but also the uh, Megan Thee Stallion, and yeah, so so the yeah, I I I can see that that criticism. I'm afraid I forget exactly who it was that made it, but yeah, the the. If I if I think of it later, I'll put it in the I'll put a link in the description box, uh, you know, so you can hear them make that case. But but yeah, um, I think for the remaining episodes, I hope for more. To, you know, so far we've only we've gotten Emil Blonsky, and then we've gotten the the kind of do not impersonate kind of thing I hope I don't know I, f I feel like if they have more interesting things to do with the the uh, with the with the do not impersonate kind of stuff I'd I'd like to watch more of that but yeah so that is it for this video so catch you next week